Hello everybody, it's Tommy and welcome back to another episode of Planet Zoo. So I am currently playing the franchise mode of Planet Zoo and one of the things that I told you guys at the beginning is that instead of maybe doing some of the upgrades to the habitats in my Let's Play because it can be very tedious and some of the level that I want to get to for the larger habitats later on in the series, they just take way too long to sit down and do in a Let's Play and it works a lot better to do in a speed build. So today is technically part three. If you want to check out the other episodes of my Let's Play, they have all been live play up until this point and this is the first habitat revamp. So I've decided that I obviously wanted something right at the front entrance of the zoo that works as the first thing you would walk in and see kind of eye-catching and this is also a little bit of a breeding area for animals that I'm going to be trading for credits. So I currently only have two real animals in my zoo, the pronghorn antelope and the peafowl and we're going to be upgrading both of their habitats today. So I've called them mini habitats because eventually I do want to do a larger area for both of these animals and do something really big and intricate but it'll be at a different part of the zoo. That way I can keep track a little bit better of maybe what I'm currently breeding and use this as like a central breeding area but I have a couple of different ideas. It's all a little bit up in the air and I'm just going to kind of go with the flow for it uh, but nonetheless they definitely needed some upgrades. The way that I had originally done the habitats was bare minimum. I didn't even use plants. I literally just gave them exactly what they needed to survive and it was time to give them a couple of things. My zoo is profitable and I don't have any loans out on it so I just let a little bit of time pass so I could accumulate probably like 30,000 and I felt comfortable at that point getting them a bunch of stuff um, and changing the fencing and moving a lot of stuff around before we pass a point of no return. It is really difficult to move animals once you have already sort of positioned them. It's really annoying to move everything around and change everything. I literally had to completely redesign the zoo to get this to look and work the way that I wanted it to. So from now on, I am going to think a little bit better about where I actually put animals in the beginning but yeah this is going to be where you first walk into the zoo and I only do have two animals so I haven't decided what I'm putting in the back two compartments yet. I have sort of a general idea. I think I want to do regions of the world so this is sort of I think these are North American animals. Um, that being said I am using some rocks that are not North American by the way uh, but I do like rocks and I think they make the habitat look a little bit more realistic and it didn't bother the antelope whatsoever. Um, peafowl are like Indian and then I wanted to do something that's maybe um, savanna based like African in one of the little sectors and then in the last one something that is Antarctic or just cold in general. That way we can have some really cool color dynamics and differentiations of animals here and really create something interesting for you to really like when you first walk in the zoo. Very cool little spot. Um, and since I've put this in, my zoo is doing a lot better. So people are definitely liking it and the animals are liking it a lot better. It is a little bit small for my antelope just because when they breed and they have their offspring, the offspring, uh, if they have more than one, the area is a little bit too small, but it doesn't bother them enough. So I'm not too worried about it. And like I said, the antelope might not stay there forever anyway. I do want to move them and or get a different antelope habitat running that's very large and a little bit more intricate. Uh, but I think this works as like the attention grabber of the zoo and when we actually play again which will be in the next episode we'll pick out the two new animals we'll do really basic habitats for them like I have done previously and then I'll show you guys what I did with some of the buildings I moved some of the staff buildings out of the way so it wasn't causing as many guests to be a little bit annoyed with it um, and then I moved some of the eating areas as well and then in general I just have some things that I want to do and I've actually figured out a theme for my zoo I'm very very excited to get going on it. I think up until this point it's a little bit difficult when it comes to this game because there are so many possibilities and things that you can do. Sometimes it's overwhelming like you don't really know what you want to do. You could do so many different things and I've been struggling to come up with how do I want to run this zoo? What kind of a zoo do I want it to be? And I finally sort of figured out the direction that I'm going to go in. So 
Some of you might like this, some of you are not going to like this, but I've decided to completely Disney theme my zoo. So if you're a regular viewer on my channel, you know that I'm a huge Disney person. I feel like this makes a lot of sense. And what I'm going to do is behind this habitat, at some point, I'm going to do an entire Cinderella castle right behind it. Um, and then all of the habitats are going to coordinate with different animals that have to do with Disney franchises. So obviously Lion King and recreating the Pride Rock and the little pond area and maybe some of the scenery uh, that we know and love from the movie. And then you could do this with literally so many movies, right? So many Disney movies have animals in them or are based around animals. I was even thinking you could stretch some of them, like, uh, for example, Up has this bird in it that's not technically a real bird, but it reminds me a lot of a flamingo. So I could see myself doing like an up house and then putting flamingo around it and things like that. And there's so many ideas that I have. I don't want to put them all out there because I kind of want to surprise you guys as we go. But that's the plan. I do have to get a little bit more money under my belt to start doing some of the more intricate stuff like that. And the other thing you have to think about is we are working in franchise mode, which means that not everything is unlocked right away. So I have to work to unlock those things to be able to do some really intricate stuff. So like maybe for later on, I would do like a mini version of Jasmine's castle and do it in the peafowl exhibit, but I don't have any of the Indian architecture pieces unlocked currently. So that's something I would have to unlock in order to get building on that. And that way I can kind of fill my building need. I know what direction I'm going in and the whole thing will be really themed and pretty. It's not going to be necessarily based after animal kingdom in Disneyland because one, I've never been there, so I don't even know how to do that. I don't know what it looks like or anything. Um, other than like tree of life, things that you know are really famous about the park, but I've seen other people do that. That's not really my intent with this. I'm going to make everything look, feel, and remind you of Disney. And I hope you guys like that idea. I feel like a lot of you will be really interested in seeing some of the things that I'm planning on doing and helps us keep a good direction moving forward. So I'm really excited to jump into that. And yeah, the peafowl kind of got a major upgrade here as far as things to do. This was something that I unlocked that I didn't realize was for them. And I think it's like a little digging area where they can dig and sort of roll around in the dirt. I put this log here as something that they can go up and down. It's really just for looks. It is something they can actually use. I checked to make sure that it was working, but they don't seem too interested in climbing, which is kind of funny to me because peafowl in real life do tend to be climbers. Um, and I've noticed that when I go to zoos that have them, they tend to have lots of things for them to jump around and climb on. So it's a little interesting to me that they're not interested in any of that at all in the game, but that's okay too. Um, I'll just do it for decoration and it's not in the way they kind of ignore it and it looks good for me. Maybe something a little bit more intricate in the future, like I said, but for now I just wanted to get use some of the stuff, use some of the plants, get the proper temperatures going. Um, I'm not super happy with the peafowl actual, uh, what do you call it? The thing they sleep under because I wanted it to just be the plants as the roof, but the game doesn't actually do it like that. It won't mark it as an actual um, shelter for them. So I ended up having to put another one in there. I'm going to figure out a workaround for that, either putting it completely underground and making it kind of non-accessible or putting a roof and then covering the roof with more plants under that little um, enclosure because I really just wanted it to feel very natural and have it be like lots of greenery and tropical plants. Uh, and other than that, it didn't really work out as far as that goes, but we'll fix it. I'm kind of learning as we go. And then the last thing was to just put in some informational stuff, some donation boxes and the speakers for the learning, which is another thing I've been kind of lacking in my zoo. And that's basically going to be the end. I am going to cut to a little bit of footage of them enjoying their new habitats at the very end here. So you can check out some of the new babies and things that were born sort of off screen. Let me know what you thought of today's speed build and make sure you check out the rest of the series if you have not already. And also what you guys think of my idea to to kind of push the direction of the zoo and I'm really excited. So I hope that you guys are too. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that little bell icon below to turn on post notifications so you can get updated every single time I post and I will talk to you all in the next one.